Hi, everybody. I'm Kat, Community and Engagement Manager for Lean Agile Global 2021. In the lead up to the live virtual conference taking place on 24th and 25th May, I will be introducing you to some of the fantastic speakers that we have in our upcoming lineup. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to Eve Hanul, Creative Collaboration Agent at Pair Coaching. Welcome, Eve. Delighted to have you here. Thank you, Kat. I'm, uh, I'm just as delighted to be here. It's, um, <laughs> it's nice to see more people again, even if it's virtual, but it's, it's always nice to meet new, new people. Yes, absolutely. I completely agree with that. So I have five questions prepared for you today. The first one, hopefully being a little bit funner and easier to answer. Um, how would you describe yourself in a single tweet? Well, I usually don't tweet about myself, but the, the tagline that I liked for, for a long time, and actually you used it already, is a creative collaboration agent. And, and next to that, another tagline that I use a lot is community instigator. Oh, I like um, that. Community instigator. Can I ask what you mean by that? Just because uh, it sounds really interesting. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, I, I, it's someone who said that to me um, at, at some, I don't remember anymore, some kind of event. And I liked it so much that, uh, that it stuck to me. Uh, as I'm not a native speaker, English speaker, I actually never even looked it up, but uh, I like the sound of it. Um, and it, it feels right because I'm doing a lot with, with communities and I like to start communities and I like to well, shake up communities a little bit and, and get, uh, yeah, work with communities outside of um, work. And actually with clients, I will try to start um, internal communities as well. So that's, um, that's why I like both of these things. Yeah, no, that's great. I think that fits in perfectly. Even if, you know, you don't know the actual definition of it, it sounds like you're, you're living it, which is fantastic. So that's fantastic. Um, Speaking more towards the conference then, uh, in your opinion, why should people come and join us virtually at Lean Agile Global this year? Well, the, the, we, we're in a pandemic and the pandemic brought us many, many bad things. Um, uh, and at the same time, although virtual conferences are not the same as in personal conferences, for me, they bring the possibility to have speakers from all around the world for even smaller events. Um, for a lot of small events, it's impossible to have um, to have people flying in from all over the world and to actually have people, participants from all over the world. And thanks to this pandemic, now we have this opportunity for a lot of events. And, and I think it's the same with Lean Agile uh, Global 2021. So uh, for me, that's, um, yeah, that, that's one of the reasons. I've never been to so many conferences and events around the world than, than just in the last year except the ones in Belgium. I try to avoid these this year. I've never seen so little of my, my local friends and, and, and yeah, community members, but that's except if they're also coming through the same events. But uh, yeah, I'm trying now to reach out and reconnect with people around, around the world. And, and more specifically about, about luck is also for me, well, for me, it's you have a, a code of conduct, which for me is, if you wouldn't have it, I would not, would not even speak, I would not even consider it. But the tagline that really um, was above it, like, don't be a jerk, that sums up for me the reason why we have a code of conduct. The tagline on its own is not enough. We need to have, okay, what do we do when, when people behave as a jerk? Yeah. But having that tagline really explains it. So I like that. It's, I, it's, the, I, it's the first time or it's the, the only one that I remember that has such a tagline and I like that. So oh, that's good. also something for me special about the conference. Oh, good. Well, I appreciate that. You know, one of the things that um, Jose and JP, the organizers of the conference, have really been wanting to create is a safe space for people that, you know, no matter what your your agile journey is, no matter what your opinion on certain methodologies is, is that everyone can express themselves freely and that they can that we can learn from each other and understand each other and, and see where we all are. And rather than judging each other, trying to think about it differently as a learning experience, as a way to understand how other people's minds work and how other people think. Um, so I appreciate that, you know, you identified with that part of our code of conduct. Yeah, that, that was, that's basically in long words, what uh, don't be a jerk means to me. It's, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's making it a safe place. Um, I didn't come up with the name before, but yeah, that, that's what, 
what the code of conduct is all about, making sure that everybody feels safe and the people who are not making it safe, well, they they are in a nice way asked to to remove themselves because they warned up front, this is the way we, we expect you to behave. And if you don't want that, that's fine as well, but just don't do it at, uh, at our conference, do it somewhere else where people think it's uh, allowed to do that. Yeah, I don't I think there were many agree. places. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. Well, speaking a little bit about inclusion, like we just talked about, and diversity, which is another big topic for LAG this year. Um, can you talk a little bit about what those two things mean to you? Well, um, well for me, I, I'm, I'm really interested in, in diversity. I, for example, I'm, I'm a male speaker. So yeah, of course, um, it, it's... Um, I still notice it also when we don't have enough women and even although I'm white, I also notice when we don't have enough diversity with color, but all kind of diversity. And um, so some, some few years ago, I, I said to myself, okay, I'm trying to, um, to, to look and, and how could I improve that myself? Um, one way was what, when I'm speaking, I try to, um, to bring in, um, another speaker so i would ask the local organizers okay could you connect me someone to someone who's interested in that same topic and we can we can co-develop the presentation um and and so that was one way to do that and typically that that would have been a woman but that could also be a, a person of color or could be someone who's diverse and different enough from for myself um, and I, when, I, when I was working on my books, I, I thought the same thing. I've read a lot of books written by, by white male. Um, at the same time, I've read also books that, um, that included other people. And what I've noticed is that a lot of them just included similar people. So I've, I've created a few community books and I worked really hard to, to make sure that, um, yeah, that, that there were more people included. So the, the last book that I'm actually still working on at this moment is called Tips from the from the Agile Trenches. And I made sure I, I spend an equal amount of money of invite uh, money, an equal amount of um, men and women that I would invite. Um, and also made sure that I just didn't invite all the big Agile names in the book. Yes, it's good for, for sales if you have some, some big Agile names in it. And, and most of them have really good IDs. So it would be stupid to say, no, don't bring your IDs to these people. But that's not enough for me. I also wanted people to, to be in the book who are really working in teams all day that we, we all know. Um, they might be more introvert. They might not be the, the people uh, shouting on stages. So I tried really hard to find these people closely in the companies I worked with, but also in, in other companies um, and use my network to find much more people. Um, and I also try to have not only people from the West. And for that, I'm not 100% happy with the results. Because for male and female, I'm about at 50%. I still have five places left. So I know it won't be 50 because it's an uneven number. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where it will end up, but it will be very close to 50. But three people from the West are way too much in the book. So I'm I'm working really hard on, on that, but I know I didn't succeed at that part. So for me, uh, I already have another community uh, driven project in my mind. I don't want to start it because I believe in, in um, limiting the books in progress as well. So uh, but by the time, <laughs> but by the time of, of that lag is, so that's the end of May. So I hope to have finished this book. There's only five places for tips left. And I have like 20 people who promised me to, to write something. So. If, if they still answer, or at least the first five answer something by, by the end of May, it should be fine. And then probably, I don't know, by this summer, maybe before, I'll start the next one and I'll make sure. And I actually am I'm working already on, okay, how can I uh, enlarge my network to um, to have more people um, from that I don't know that are from, from the bigger circles, let's say it like that. Um, so yeah, that's how I do it. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, you know, I, I love, um, I, first of all, I love that you write books about tips from the community. I think that's fantastic. And it is really important to, in, as you said, not just include the, the big speakers, the big names, because they do help you write books, but, you know, uh, not, not every, or sorry, sell books, but not everyone wants to hear from the same people over and over again. So being able to talk to people that are new to the industry, people that have different ideas um, about, about the communities and 
you know, as you said, people that are working, they're in the trenches at the moment um, that can give you their current hands-on knowledge is really important. And I like that you said that because, you know, this year as well, we had a very similar idea that we didn't just want big names at our conference. Um, quite a few of these speakers from around the world are presenting in a conference setting for the very first time. Um, and I, and I love that about that because it gives them the opportunity to kind of meet people and speak to the community in a way that they haven't before. And it's also allowed us to give them the platform to do that. So uh, hopefully, uh, because we do have quite a lot of people from the East as well, you'll be able to meet a couple of people that you can uh, connect with for your next book. <laughs> Yeah, I hope so as well. When when you said it, it's not just about well, not everybody is interested in hear these these big names talk. Um, the, I'm I'm also I'm always interested because the well, if the few names that I now even have in my head that I always love listening to them. Um, although some of them keep repeating themselves, and sometimes that's good. I need to rehear to to learn again and to remember some of the things because yeah that is how humans are we sometimes keep forgetting the things that we learned some five to ten years ago but like you said Kat it's, it's some of these new people they might bring totally outrageous ideas things that well we, we're now living in a pandemic everybody's working remotely while a lot of the big agile names set in in 2000 said no don't work remotely it's impossible you cannot do it and we're all doing it yeah. and and yeah i remember i did my first whole uh, project as an agile coach uh in two for um Uh, with people from Russia so all of a sudden I was not only helping a Belgian company but I was helping a Belgian Russian uh, partnership and it worked and it really f was very hard for me to to figure out how this cannot work because we're working agile but and my personal coach made me repeat that question multiple times until I realized it's not about working agile it's about making things work and agile should help me with that and if agile or part of agile says this is not working then then i don't well that part won't help me yeah of course that was 2005 this was the beginning of skype and we had the beginning of all these tools all these tools didn't exist when when the manifesto was written so now we're living in a totally different world zoom didn't exist in 2005 and 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 all these other tools um i still don't think the tools are what they should be to work perfectly remote but they're a lot better than what we had like 10 15 years ago so we're getting there closely uh, or f gradually we're getting more and more of that and this is where we need some of these people to say well you know what i'm working remote most of the time and and i want to make it work so yeah that's um yeah and absolutely. and th these are some of these crazy ideas and there's a lot more of that so that's why i try to gather them no, fantastic. I love that. And you're completely right. You know, we didn't have these tools back in 2005. And, you know, let's just think about where we're going to be in um, another 15 years, um, all the tools that we wouldn't have had now, um, that are just going to be absolutely amazing ideas that people have conceptualized coming out of the pandemic. Um, so yes, I completely agree with you there. Lovely. So um, just to wrap it up then. Oh, actually, sorry, not to wrap it up. We have one more question before that. Um, I want to know more about your talk or what you're planning on talking about uh, at the conference. Um, so why should people come and uh, listen to you at the conference this year? So, so I was talking before about the tips that I gathered. So my talk will be um, giving a snapshot of that because I, I, I thought about, okay, if I come as a presenter, I, like I said, I can bring a co-presenter, uh, but doing it remotely with a co-presenter is even more challenging. I did a few, it's not that it's impossible and, and I like doing it, but it also brings some, some logistical problems, not, yeah. not just uh, even time-wise, it, it's not always easy. Um, but then I thought, okay, I have this book with all these tips, so let me bring other presenters with me. And so what I will do is I will present the tips from these people, of course, standing on the shoulder of these giants and all these other people, I will, I will mention them. Um, and yeah, so the book in total will have 89 tips. I won't have the time to talk about 89 tips. <laughs> I haven't decided yet which tips I will I will bring. So that um, I'm 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 still changing that, and uh, I've worked a little bit on the presentation today and um, or actually last night, 
I was already today <laughs> but uh, but still um but yeah i when i worked on it i i, I even changed things and i removed some so that's why i don't know yet there's still uh, more than a month to come so i'll probably change a few of these things but i have uh, a lot of them um and yeah it's i will try to add the diversity of bringing a, a lot of people um and some of these ideas well i can of course not bring it the way um other people will bring it either if it's in Ardita or uh, jo uh, Johanna Rotman or, or Jutta Eckstein. I, I cannot bring it the way they would bring it, but I can my bring my version of that um, on how these things are. There is other tips. There is actually a very nice tip uh, from Henrik Nieberg that's just one word. And, and okay, I like that tip and I left it in there, even though a lot of people say, where is the text gone well for me <laughs> that word is is just enough when i read it it's yeah this is such an important thing and i'll probably bring it but then i'll i'll explain it a little more what i feel that that could be behind it yeah um and and some other things and, and now i just mentioned again some some big names but there are yeah other people who are um who are just people that have worked with uh, locally as well um yeah, so so that tips that I that I can bring, um, and and some of them are very controversial. Like there is a tip from uh, Daria who says, "Okay, don't forget to mine for conflict." All of us, for most of it, we try to avoid the conflict, but but she's like, "No, no, we need the conflict, but in a healthy way." So I like mm -hmm. ideas like that, um, and and yeah, think people that say, "Okay, slow down, then speed up," because agile is all about speeding up. Well, maybe let's let's first slow down that we know why we're why we want to speed up. Tips like that are are in that. Um, there are also tips that written uh, in the pandemic that people actually said, "Whoa, wait a minute." I was working with a team and all of a sudden we're working from home and I've, I've noticed that for me and, and the tag word was there, love is the key for, from Anka Martin. So that for me, it's like, okay, she really focuses again on what what what's my role as a scrum master oh i need to make sure that the people understand each other that okay then we can keep working and maybe it's not so much about this or that um, meeting but it's more about okay do do i care about my team and how can i send my team that i care about it and do i love myself I, that's a message that i i found in a few other um, tips as well that people say first i need to understand myself before i can go further so a lot of tips I just picked out. I just looked at the list now and I picked out a few while scrolling. Uh, I don't even know if these two are the ones that that, that I will bring. Uh, like I said, I might change IDs. But uh, yeah, there is a lot of them. Um, the people who will come to my, my talk, I will give them um, also... Um, yeah, um, a coupon so that they can just download the book afterwards uh, for uh, for a cheaper price to to make sure that um, yeah the because for me the book I, I don't care about making money on the book for me it's more like spreading all these tips uh, the money that I'm making with it I'm actually using for for an editor to to make sure that the book is is more or less aligned in 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 languages because. Yeah because we have a lot of people from all around the world there might be uk english there might be canadian english there might be us english there might be uh yeah i don't know um uh, english uh, with hair on it like like we say sometimes it's yes. really bad english um so things like that i want to to make sure that it looks a little bit more similar yeah. um but other than that it's it's more for me about spreading the message well, that's fantastic. I absolutely love that. And, you know, I think that a lot of people in the community can truly appreciate a book full of tips. You know, um, there's there's a lot of people that, um, especially newer to the community, that haven't really had the opportunity to build their community, to build their networks, to meet people and learn from them. And so it's really amazing that you kind of created a space where they can learn from all of these people from across the globe in, in one place. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's well next to the, it's it's next to the tips and deeds, and I think you you touch a very important point. I, I hope that more people will connect to these people and not just to the big names, but also to the others. Like, okay, I like that idea. What, where where did you learn that? Because some people learned it in a training, but others did it just on their own or maybe by who they are. But yeah. that that that's just lovely that we can connect with with more people. 
because like you say we we might learn something in a training we learn a lot in events like like uh, like but at the same time we, i learn most by working with people and connecting with people yeah and and yeah this is for me one way to help people connect to each other Fantastic. Well, that's great. Well, to wrap it up here, um, this is much more of a, a personal question rather than a professional question. Um, but what are you most looking forward to after COVID has settled down? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these people who are, we, we have actually built a large house and a large garden a year or two before, before the lockdown. So I was kind of prepared to, to work from home. And, and so for me, the, we don't have much of the trouble. Um, the kids are, are uh, for them, it's of course, we have teenagers, so for them, it's a lot harder. And and if there's one thing that, that both my partner and me, but I'll, I'll speak for myself, that we're looking forward is also that having our kids going out, because it, it feels like it's almost a year ago that we've been alone at home. I yes. know it's not true. Uh, because I know there will be there were moments the last year that both the three of them were were outside, but it kind of feels like that because before there was like a lot more, um, and because they're teenagers, yeah, they stay up much longer, so we don't have much time that it's just the two of us, and 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 so yeah, for for us it's it's looking forward to that part, like okay, there might be a moment that the full evening the two of us are alone, and I don't even know what we're going to do. It's more like okay. <laughs> Hey, this is this is us time. This is nice. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that that's that's what we're looking forward. I think. Oh, fantastic! Well, that's lovely. I, I'm pleased to hear that. I love I love that answer. And um, you know, I personally have no children or teenagers of my own, uh, but I do work with quite a few people that do, and I and I understand the 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 release of, of stress and pressure when you finally have an evening where there's no disruption no chaos no teenagers stomping around so <laughs> i can see that easily as it being something to look forward to exactly yeah yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Eve. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today and to get get your um, get information about your conference and all your passion that you have for the industry out there to people that will hopefully be attending uh, Lean Agile Global this year. And I do hope that a lot of people come to your talk to listen and hear these tips and learn not only from yourself, but all the other people that you've spoken to in the industry. I hope so too. Thank you at least for, for inviting me both to the conference and, and doing this video. It's it's a nice way to, to promote indeed uh, the talk. So I think more conferences should have something even in an offline world. It might be interesting. I know in XP, uh, XP Day Benelux, we usually have something that's called, um, I forgot the name, but it's a 30 seconds that you have at the beginning of um, every day that you can yeah, make publicity of your talk. And I like it so much because it, it really gives you an idea. OK, that's the speaker and this is how it and sometimes people make yeah, very small plays out of it and, and very fun. Some people are very dry and then the session is very fun. But it's yeah, it, it, it just it gives you an idea. I, again, that's that speaker again. I liked it last year or I didn't like it. That's possible as well. Yeah, <laughs> but it it's gives possible. you an idea. <laughs> It, it, it gives you an idea again for the sessions. So uh, I like these kind of things. Um, Good. So, yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you again for your time. And I really look forward to having you at the conference later in the year. Same for me. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.